Hello, this is uh, my nitrogen laser. Um, this is the first laser that's not powered by electrostatic machines that, where I'm going to attempt to laser die. I've got a neon sign transformer. There is no rectifier on this transformer, so what this requires me to do is allow it to charge uh, between cycles. It has to, so it, it's very limited to the amount of um, peak power I can get, but I get a lot of pulses per second, which makes it appear continuous. Um, the average, I mean, the peak power with the electrostatic sources and the extremely high voltages are, of course, much higher. For example, the spark gap here is, I mean, barely over a millimeter, maybe two at the most. With the electrostatic sources, I can get spark gaps up to a centimeter and a half, 15 millimeters. So you're trading peak power with electrostatics for average power with uh, a small electronic power supply. Now I put this cover over here to cover the light from the spark gap. What you've got here is two aluminum profiles with a raised edge. Uh, these aluminum profiles uh, are like what goes at the bottom of a door. Um, and your raised edges form the, the channel between them and they actually form the capacitor plates as well. You can see I've got a uh, resistor back here to charge both sides and uh, these bottles of pennies are for weights. The hose goes to a cover that uh, introduces nitrogen into the uh, channel which of course gives you a lot more power. It's not very practical without it. Now I'm going to put the camera right here before I do that, um, what this is, this capacitor is actually a sheet of aluminum foil separated by overhead projector transparencies. These are like clear write-on transparencies that they use for overhead projectors. They're like thin sheets of plastic or something, plastic, some type of plastic. But as you see here, it is five thousandths of an inch thick. And uh, so you've got a very thin plastic which makes a really good capacitor and it'll also give you enough uh, capacitance to give you a laser output at low voltage which is what we want with this setup so I just wanted to include that you can't tell here from the video but it's clear plastic sheet separating this aluminum foil from those top uh, metal rails that form the top place of the capacitor and you've actually got two capacitors side by side with sharing the same plate on the bottom the same common plate and then the spark gap uh, connects one side of the uh, one capacitor to the bottom plate and uh, then it creates a real fast discharge across the channel between the two top capacitors. Okay, let's uh, see what we can do here. Before I move on to that, um, one more important thing. What you're looking at right here is a small box made out of uh, uh, microscope slides and the front side of that box as you can see is recessed just a little bit and silicone is applied uh, just on the outside corners here. Um, let's see if I can point to it very well. Right there and right there. And then, of course, it's siliconed all around not to leak. And you've got a cylindrical, also called an astigmatic lens, in front of it, as you can see from here. And this lens uh, focuses the nitrogen laser beam to a tight line right on the inside of that glass wall at the front there. And that's where your laser action and the die takes place is along the length of that line. And right here you've got a small lens to collaminate, collimate the output from the uh, die laser because it's highly divergent just like a laser pointer would be if it didn't have, if a laser pointer didn't have a collimating lens. Um, this is my die. I'm using uh, Arm & Hammer 2 times Concentrate Liquid Detergent. No dyes, no perfumes. You want the one that says no dyes and no perfumes uh, if that's if it has that on there, especially the powdered kind if you choose to make something out of that because um, what they call dyes and what we're after here is obviously two different things. Uh, we're after the fabric brightener and that's what is responsible for the laser action uh, that we're uh, taking advantage of. So anyway, that's what this is. This is actually laundry detergent rather than real laser dye put the camera on night because I think the beam will be easier to see it brightens things up a bit and I'm putting it down here hopefully we can get a shot of the laser and I'm fixing to turn the laser on 
First I plug it in, then I turn the gas on. Hopefully you can see something. Yep, sure enough. That's it. Small, thin, blue beam. There you go. Cheap, visible light laser made out of laundry detergent. Okay, now one more thing I was going to point out. That is, um, I could get better results with a real laser dye. This is actually laundry detergent, and I'll make some more videos using good laser dye, which will hopefully give me a much better output. And also, I used a smoke machine, as you can see here. This is a small, cheap smoke machine. I bought it at Walmart for $20. And it's just a little, um, you know, Halloween-type smoke machine. And you have to have one of these if you're going to make the beam visible. So that's something that's definitely worth the investment if you uh, want to photograph your laser output. Thank you for watching and I'll follow up with some more videos when I get some, uh, some more dyes to use.